Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. Yes, yes, just boom, just one step right there. Yeah, we gotta go. Pop, pop, boom. Yes. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Well, 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 PBC and Showtime does it again. Now, a fight I'm looking forward to, I just think is going to be a fun and scrappy fight with Sean Porter and Andre Berto. April 22nd, they just got another fight added to that card, and that's Jamel Charlo taking on his mandatory Charles Hatley. Now, it's been a long time coming for the, the Charlo Hatley fight. The hat the Hatley fight was supposed to happen I want to say at least one or two occasions it was supposed to happen previously so it's been talked about for a while we knew this was supposed to be Jamel's next opponent but it kept falling through for whatever reason like getting pushed back date wise then it was supposed to be on the Gary Russell they were trying to do like a Showtime double or triple header with Gary Russell Jr. and his mandatory Vicente Escondon and Escondon got injured and that's up in the air. I gotta say this too. Another, they're both they're both WBC champions, Jermail Charlo and Gary Russell Jr. But the way Gary Russell Jr., all that skill, all that talent, you know what I mean? The way his career has went, it's just been um, disappointing. I would like to see him a lot more active. As far as I know, he's not injured or anything. And obviously, he couldn't control his opponent getting injured. But even before that, it's like we haven't really seen his last big fight was against Johnny Gonzalez where he took the title then he fought that Patrick Highland guy I never even really heard of and we just really haven't seen much of him meanwhile guys like Lomachenko around his division are, are fighting frequently fighting Axeman and now he's fighting Jason Sosa and Leo Santa Cruz fought Carl Frampton twice you know what I mean lots have been going on since since Gary Russell won that title, so I'd like to see him definitely get more active. As far as uh, Charlo, again, the fight was supposed to happen previously, but for whatever reason, one reason or another, it kept getting pushed back or postponed, but now it landed on the Berto Porter card, Berto Porter card, which is, is definitely good, and to me, that enhances that card. In case you don't know much about Charles Hatley, he has a good rec a record of 26 one and one so he only has one loss one draw and i think he has like 19 knockouts so a guy with some some power he beat anthony mundine which is probably his best win and he went over there to do it he went and fought mundine in his backyard and did it another good thing is you can't complain about this fight because one it's a it's like a co-main event it's just being added to another card but also this is charlo's mandatory so i mean you can't complain. This is mandatory. This is the guy he has to face. Like when Gennady Golovkin fought Dominic Wade, nobody had heard of Dominic Wade, and people said, "Hey, it's his mandatory." So, I mean, you can't be mad at at Charlo for fighting his mandatory. Now, as far as there's been some changes in in Charlo's career, he was working with Ronnie Shields. I don't know exactly what happened, but he has since moved out to the Bay, or excuse me, to California. And he's now training at the Tin Goose Gym with Ricky Funes. And that's the clip you've seen at the beginning. And he, he looked good. He was throwing good hooks and whatnot. Lions only hooks. And I'm all for it. If, if a fighter feels they need a change or a change of scenery, a break, or get away from your twin brother, whatever the situation is, then I'll be, I'm, I'm all for it. Because at the end of the day, it's better to make these decisions now than like a lot of fighters do who take a loss because they didn't have things right in their camp or 
weren't satisfied or were with the trainer and no longer learning, whatever, whatever the situation is. And it's better to do it while you're still undefeated and make an executive decision to move than to take a like an embarrassing loss and then figure out, oh, hey, maybe I need a new trainer. Maybe there's things I need to work on. You know what I mean? So I'm all for that. I just the thing I don't like in boxing is when people are like Chad Dawson and they keep switching trainers and they have like 10, 11 trainers in a short period of time. Like that's that's a bit ridiculous. You know what I mean? You should it's it's very hard just imagine if you worked at a job and you have 10 or 11 store managers in two years uh, you know what i mean it's, it's, it becomes hard because different people have different expectations they make you do different things you know what i mean one store manager might care about the cleanliness of the cash registers and another manager might not care about that and only care about sales or whatever you know what i mean so it's just different when you have different people's practices and you you don't have like a home you're just bouncing around but i like the move for charlo i think the 10 goose would be a good change of pace brandon rios recently moved there and berto sometimes goes up there to train when he's in la so it's a good gym and i like it being added to the the sean porter andre berto card because i think both fights could provide action now charlo's brother he recently fought in December of last year. He fought his mandatory, and he looked stellar. He looked awesome in that fight. Knocked him down, knocked Julian J. Rock Williams down, and Jamal Charlo, before moving up to the middleweight division, where he's ranked now, I think they have him ranked number two in the WBC, he knocked out his mandatory. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. I think Jamal is the better of the two brothers, but they both could scrap. I mean, I, I seen... I was at their triple header. It was Edison Lada, Vanas Part Two, Jamal Charlo Trout, and then it was Jamel fighting against John Jackson. And I think John Jackson was outboxing him and, and clearly up, and he got caught. And then um, Jamel was able to close the show. He Jamel also had like a, a close fight with Vanas Matarosa, and I think I gave it to him. Vanas complained about the decision, but I, I thought it was a uh, it was just a close fight, so it probably could have went either way, but. We'll see what he learns. And I know he's motivated by his brother getting that knockout against his mandatory. Plus, there's been some bad blood. Like, there's a Texas versus Texas kind of rivalry. The Charlos are from Houston and Hatley's from Dallas, if I'm not mistaken. So there's like a little bit of a hometown rivalry. And I know when I was at that triple header, that showtime, when I covered that fight, I was, I was it was funny because I was actually sitting next to Keisha Cole and Virgil Hunter when... He first, or it was first announced that that was his daughter. But when I covered that particular fight, Hadley hopped in the ring after one, after the other Charlo, Jamel, Jamal, I think it was, beat Trout. He hopped in the ring and started this like altercation and like, oh, I'm, I want to fight you or whatever. And then it was just like this whole melee and they had to like kick him out of the ring and stuff. So there's been, this fight has been brewing and he's worked his way, got into a mandatory slot. So it's a rightful title defense and it's on a good card so i, I gotta say man like hbo you gotta do something baby <laughs> something special i just really haven't seen a definitive answer from hbo with in comparison to showtime showtime's calendar and we all know al Heyman has this crazy stable but there's still other fighters there's good other fights that people want to see and we really haven't seen much from hbo i think on regular HBO, the best fight that we've seen was David Lemieux versus Curtis Stevens, probably, right? And then the only other fight I can really even think of that's been on regular HBO is the fight with Miguel Berchelt versus Francisco Vargas. I mean, they're just not really putting much programming. I mean, Lomachenko versus Sosa, maybe that'll be good, but I mean, Lomachenko has to be a heavy favorite. He just knocked out Axeman Walters, even though they're both champions. Um, I think Sosa, he's game, he's tough, but he should be a massive underdog. The fight with Jamel, Charlo, and Hatley, I think that's, Charlo should be the favorite, but it could be a good fight. You know what I mean? Both guys possess power and that hometown rivalry and everything that I was saying, that like bad blood and beef and Berto Porter, a lot of people are sleeping on it. They keep saying Sean Porter, easy. Shout out, I know both of them. 
but shout out to them both. I don't think that's an easy fight. I think both guys with the right game plan, if they fight right, can come away with the W. And they've both been on a little bit of a layoff. Birdo, I don't think he fought since the Victor Ortiz win. I covered that fight. Um, Sean Porter hasn't fought since Thurman. You know what I mean? That was a while ago. The Thurman fight, I want to say it was in June of 2016. So they both haven't fought in a minute. So I think the main event, I think both guys are hungry and going to be in shape and stuff. So I think, I think it'll be a good fight, man. Let me know what you guys think. Like I said, HBO, I don't know what their game plan is. I don't know if they're slowly getting out of the boxing business, but it, it seems like they really and truly only want to go with sure shot fights that they believe are going to be successful. But the boxing doesn't work like that because I thought Triple G versus Jacobs, they're saying it did about 153,000, which is less than Ward Kovalev. People were joking and laughing at the Ward Kovalev pay-per-view numbers, which happened in November around the holidays. But Golovkin Jacobs, which was a good fight. I covered that fight. I was there live. It was a great fight. I enjoyed it. And the main event and co-main event was good. The Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez Sorung Vasai was a very good fight too, but it didn't really translate into pay-per-view success. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I don't know if HBO is trying to cherry pick and only pick fights, but again, that's to me, that's proof. You try to put Triple G and Chocolatito on the same card like you guys have been doing, on another pay-per-view in a package deal and both times they pretty much flopped and did under 200,000. Meanwhile, Pacquiao versus Vargas, which is a fight I absolutely did not care about, right? And a lot of people feel that way. I mean, there's no disrespect to either. It's just it wasn't what I think boxing needed. And that did they're saying over 300,000. You know what I'm saying? So you you do the math and tell me if if Golovkin Jacobs was a, a commercial success. You know what I mean? So I don't know if HBO is getting out of the boxing business slowly but surely. But it's not. Their regular programming hasn't been good. It's like they're only trying to go after the Canelo Chavez Jr. fights on a Mexican independent. You know what I mean? It's like that fight. There's really no way it could fail. You know what I mean? You have two of the biggest, the two biggest stars out of Mexico that are active fighters. Who people have wanted to see fight since they were both coming up fighting at this weird catch weight and Chavez looks motivated Canelo's moving up and people want to see the either fight Golovkin like the winner fight you know what I'm saying so I don't really think that will fail on a Cinco de Mayo weekend but they got to do something with their regular programming because it doesn't make sense to have a HBO subscription if you're gonna get one fight and it's going to be so far a few. Even the David Lemieux. David Lemieux, from what I've seen, was a heavy favorite over Curtis Stevens. So you're telling me uh, David Lemieux, Curtis Stevens, Vasil Lomachenko, another heavy favorite over Jason Sosa. And then Miguel Berchelt versus Francisco Vargas is the only time we've really seen the the odds not, not play out. You know what I mean? The underdog pulled the upset. And I think that's really... Because Francisco Vargas is taking too many tough fights back to back to back to back. You can't do that. You can't fight Takashi Mura, nearly get your eye knocked out of your damn head, and then fight Orlando Salido, a game Mexican veteran who's fought Your York is Gamboa, Juan Manuel Marquez, uh, Robert Guerrero, and all these guys, and then and beat Vasil Lomachenko, and then you put him in there with them, and then you put him in there with Miguel Berchelt. Like it's just it's too much. But we'll see what HBO does. I'm really happy with what Showtime, the direction of their programming, and PBC. They're just they're holding it down, and they're they can afford with their stable to put multiple fights on a card, right? So it's like you're getting multiple good fights. Like technically, from what I see, I think you could build the Jamel the Jamel Charlo Hatley. That could be a regular Showtime main event. You know what I mean? I think that could be a just a regular Showtime event, you know what I mean? And they're putting it as a co-main event, so it shows that they got it like that. Let me know what you guys think. Berto Porter card just got enhanced as far as I'm concerned. Make sure you share the video, like the video as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego Center. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.